Hello, everyone. We are excited to welcome R.P. Chandana, our keynote speaker for this year's Impact Investing competition. I'm Ayushi. And I'm Rachel. And we are Business as an Agent for World Benefit Fellows. We are first year MBA students at Weatherhead School of Management at Case Western Reserve University. Before we get into the interview questions with RT, I'll hand it over to Rachel, who will share some information about RT's background in impact investing space. Over to you, Rachel. Thanks, Ayushi. RT has been an angel and impact investor and advisor for the last 12 years. Before that, she held executive positions at several technology companies where she led global IT teams. Companies she has worked at include Oracle, Hitachi, Coherent, Autodesk, and Nikon. Currently, she co-leads impact investing for Silicon Valley Social Venture Fund. She has been a guest lecturer for an impact investing course at Stanford and for a seminar series course on impact investing at the Weatherhead School of Management at Case Western Reserve University. Given her deep passion for technology, social change, and empowerment, Artie mentors social entrepreneurs and invests in companies driving social change with a technology focus. Some programs she has mentored at and advised include MIT's D-Lab Accelerator, MIT Solve, Stanford GSB Startup Garage, Stanford Center Labs, and GBSI Miller Center. Artie serves on the Board of Trustees at Case Western Reserve University. She's a board member at Silicon Valley Social Venture Fund, Peninsula Bridge, and Team Success Incorporated. She also serves on the advisory board at Miller Center, Santa Clara University. Artie holds a BS in mathematics from Bombay University and an MS in computer science from Case Western Reserve University. Welcome, Artie. I'll now pass it over to Ayushi to begin our interview. Um, hi, Arti. So before we start with our questions, the first and foremost question that we would like to ask you is like, can you tell us about your journey to this impact investing? And personally, like what interested you in this field at the foremost? So hi, everyone. I'm very excited to be here, especially because this is at Case Western Reserve University, my alma mater, and uh, also I'm on the board of trustees here. Um, so, well, my journey actually started way back when, when I was in college, I guess, uh, technology was uh, all, you know, innovation and technology was always exciting to me. And uh, after I graduated from Case Western Reserve, I worked in the tech field and saw how technology was widely used in <clears throat> enterprise and in the corporate world and how we could not have actually survived without technology if we see the innovation that has happened over the years. Um, the other areas were not as tech savvy as they are now. And uh, I, when I got, you know, the corporate world was very exciting, but at some point I decided to try out entrepreneurship and try to start an ed tech company and that's when I really began to meet other social entrepreneurs. What I realized was um, instead of me trying to do one company, it would be better if I could use the skill set that I had and the experience that I had to work with various companies. And I started um, just working, advising companies, mainly in this, uh, you know, working with their business models, strategic planning, et cetera. And that was a time when I came across social entrepreneurs. And uh, it, just, it just got me very excited. I'm a continuous learner. And I felt that, wow, one can actually use innovation to do good and also make money. This is a win-win, you know, in, in many ways. And that was really my step into impact investing. So my husband and I had both been doing angel investing for many years, but for the past six to seven years, I've really been focusing on the impact investing space, which was very new, fairly new at the time. It's much more advanced now. Um, so I would say my first impact investment was in my own ed tech startup, which, you know, didn't really go anywhere, but I learned a lot. And well, I didn't have the impact that I would have liked to have, but I definitely learned a lot from there. And uh, 
you know, got started there. Uh, at the same time, we were also trying to uh, set up our family foundation and I was looking at philanthropy. While looking at philanthropy, I came across what's called venture philanthropy. And that means you actually invest just like you would as a VC, but you're investing in nonprofits for impact and you're measuring impact. So everything's very measurable and scalable. And that was when I thought about, oh, you know, there are revenue generating nonprofits. Why can these not be for profits as well? And that's when I actually came across for profits that was solving social and environmental problems. And that I would say that was kind of my first step into impact investing. While I was doing that, I also um, was um, started mentoring at different accelerator programs. I think MIT D Lab was the first one that I mentored at and uh, then at, at Stanford, et cetera. But I've mentored extensively at Santa Clara's Miller Center and also at MIT Solve. And that's that, you know, I realized that it was not very easy for these social entrepreneurs to get seed level funding. And that's mainly because traditional VCs turned them down. Uh, they, they wanted to fund later stage companies. They felt that impact companies would not make money, which is not really the case. And I'm just gonna mention a few impact companies that uh, you know, many of you would know, for example, Ben and Jerry's Zipcar Beyond Meat, which went public just last week. And, you know, at home, you may be using uh, method uh, cleaning agents, etc. All of these are impact companies, honesty, um, and they've done, they've done really well. So you can do good for the environment and also, uh, you know, have a financial return. Yes, some of impact investing is patient capital, but I think in order to really make a change, someone needs to step up and somebody needs to start funding these companies. Um, so that's, that's really how I got into that was with mentoring and then st I started investing personally and got very excited about the investing. And I must say that the type of entrepreneur that I meet is, is very, very different. The social entrepreneurs are highly passionate about solving world problems. And these are real world problems and to see them being solved for me is a high. So uh, that's, that really got me excited and got me into impact investing. Thank you so much for sharing that, like, and taking us through your career timeline, and then also sharing what really inspires you and brings passion into this field for you. Uh, my next question would be, Aarti, that, I mean, what are those key factors or attributes that an impact investor must focus on while making an investment decision? Like, we understand that each investment decision has a certain UN global goal to fulfill, but what are those some attributes that you think are pretty much important? So when I invest, I invest as an investor. Okay, when I invest as an impact investor, the only additional piece really that I am looking for is the passion and the actual measurable impact. So I am a huge believer and have always looked at data and at numbers. So when someone comes to me and says that they're going to solve a problem, I look at various aspects, but it has to be measurable. The financials have to be measurable and the impact has to be measurable, right? So I'm looking for someone with passion, somebody who's solving a real world problem, someone who's innovating uh, something new or finding an easier or more efficient way to do something. Uh, you know, somebody who can, truly, truthfully make a change. Uh, that's, that's the kind of uh, company that I'm looking for. It has to be scalable. It has to be sustainable. Otherwise, it's good, not going to go very far. And then as far as um, the entrepreneur goes, I think the team is, just like with any investment, the team is extremely, extremely important. 
even more than the idea, I would say the team, because a team can you know, come up with a new idea, they can pivot as long as they're true to their mission. So I look for perseverance, I look for resourcefulness, you know, I look for someone with a sponge-like nature, someone who is willing to invest in themselves, someone who's absolutely not afraid of failure because fa failure will happen. And some, someone who is open-minded, who's a good listener, um, who keeps their stakeholders in mind and is really working together with others, is able to build a strong team, has great people skills, you know, has, is persuasive, um, has the ability to market themselves first and believes in themselves and also market their company. Uh, they should have a clearly defined business model and very realistic uh, financial goals as well. Just the hockey curve doesn't always work. How do you get there? Um, you know, I like working with companies that set milestones, that have achievable goals and can prove that they can do that, right? And if, if the passion and the perseverance isn't there, um, it, it would be very, very difficult for them to actually <laughs> reach where they need to reach. So I look for all of those different things, not just uh, in the team, but also um, really try to understand the business model. For me personally, you know, technology for good is my sweet spot and that's where I focus on. Does that answer your question, Ayushi? It does. It does. And it wonderfully answers that. Technology for good. <laughs> Over to you, Rachel. Awesome. Thanks. So now, Artie, we want to ask you a question that is more geared towards people like Ayushi and myself, who up until recently weren't as familiar with the world of impact investing. And we're so appreciative of the time that you've spent with us kind of teaching us what impact investing is all about. And so this question is, what is one thing that people often get wrong about impact investing? So, um, you know, a lot... Some I'm going to talk and, you know, mention this in a few different ways. So from an investor's perspective, I think what people sometimes get wrong about impact investing is they feel that it's a bad investment. They shouldn't be investing in this because they're not going to make money. Um, they feel it's foo-foo. They, you know, this should be philanthropy and there's nothing like a combination of making money and doing good you can make money and do good. We just mentioned some companies that have done that, right? Um, there's, there's a lot of companies in the environment and su sustainable space that, that do this all the time. So I think people feel that doing good and making money cannot be done together. And that's where I, I have a difference of opinion. They can be. Um, I also feel that uh, there's this, some people who feel if it's do good, it should be philanthropy. And that's another place that I, I disagree. I, I actually think if it's a non, even in the philanthropy side and the nonprofit side, if it's um, a company, if it's a, it should, any nonprofit should be run like a real organization. If they can have revenue, they should be revenue generating. And, self-sustain instead of asking for donations all the time, right? I mean, or they could do a combination of it. So, uh, so I think that's where people get things wrong is yes, you can have impact and make money and innovate and use technology, you know, and hire a lot of people as well, make other people self-sustainable also. There's, it's, it's a business like any other business. And it should be looked at, at that way. And a social entrepreneur should return to an investor just like any other entrepreneur would. And if they don't have an exit strategy and they cannot return, then it's a different, they have to find a different way to make their investor uh, happy because it has to be a worthwhile investment, right? Thank you, that makes a lot of sense. And next, I'm hoping that you can give us an example of a recent investing opportunity that you've 
come across that you or your company has invested in in the impact space? So there's several I can talk about, but one that I want to pick uh, <laughs> is a company that I invested in through Silicon Valley's uh, Social Venture Fund. And I also personally invested in the reason that I bring up this company is because I invested in a for-profit with philanthropic dollars. So I invested as a program related investment in this company. Uh, the, the name of the company is Med Hall. So it's medical hauling. So it's Med Hall. And um, the woman is, it's run by a, a, a founder who's a, a black woman, very, very, very smart. It's again, it's a company in the Midwest. It's not a Silicon Valley company. Uh, she, I actually was on a panel where I was judging her at uh, Santa Clara Miller Center. But then I also found her to uh, the Morgan Stanley uh, cohort. The Morgan, Morgan Stanley has a multicultural cohort. She was there. Uh, she's also funded by Citibank Impact Fund. Um, she has various investors. So what Med Hall does is it's, it's very much like Uber, but it's Uber for hauling people for medical needs. So if I have a doctor's appointment and I'm in a, a low income zip code, she only works with low income zip codes. Okay. So if I'm I need to go to a doctor's appointment or I need to go for um, dialysis or one of these non-ambulance type, uh, you know, reasons, transportation, I don't go because I don't have transportation, which means my health deteriorates. And in addition to that, uh, the hospital or uh, the medical center does not make money because the person does not show up. So it's in the interest of the medical center or the hospital or the dialysis center to pay for the transportation so that they get the insurance money. So what she does is she's, it's a subscription model. So, you know, they pay something like $50 a ride um, or maybe more, maybe less, depending on the number of rides they sign up for. So when I, when I'm, if I'm a medical center staff and I sign you up for an appointment at the very same time, I give you your transportation. So an app that looks quite similar to an Uber app shows up and they see which uh, drivers are available based on what kind of vehicle is required, whether there's wheelchair assist required or not or what. And that gets booked at the same time, right? So now the person shows up to the appointment and these are all, she works only in low income groups, uh, zip codes because these centers do get paid do pay for transportation. And that's, that's just how it works. But the second thing that happens there is that there are a lot of small, uh, you know, mom and pop type places or Uber type drivers where they have one or two vehicles that they can use only at certain times. So they turn on their app just for those hours that they can, instead of an Uber driver sitting and turning an app on and off, what these people do is they show their availability in her, uh, pla on her platform. So if they have other jobs, but they have a van that can transport someone and they can work, you know, certain hours of the day, they just keep themselves available for those hours. So it's helping them get this additional work as well, right? And she doesn't own any of the vehicles. It's a very simple business in that sense. She doesn't own any of the vehicles. It's purely a software business. She has this platform that does the logistics of matching a patient to a driver. And that's basically what she does and make sure that that happens. And the driver, drivers have to go through certain training because it's hauling medical patients, right? So, so that's, that's basically what happens is, is that. Um, she's done really well. She's ex she keeps expanding uh, from zip code to zip code because it's an easy model that she can take and reproduce. Um, now she, she is she is one of the most amazing entrepreneurs that I have seen. Um, she 
fundraised all through COVID, um, all through the, co you know, during COVID times and was able to, uh, she was oversubscribed even during those ah, times. That's really cool. And, you know, I'm hoping that she does really well. Um, she's definitely helping a, a lot of, a lot of people get to their medical appointments. That's a great example. Thank you. Do you know anything about what inspired her for that investment or what her background was before yes. going into that space? Yes, she comes from, she comes from a low income background. Um, she, her grandmother was very ill and, you know, couldn't get to her medical appointments because nobody was there to bring her to her medical appointments. And that's why she came up with this idea. Oh, that's, that's that's very inspiring and it's completely a software that's where when i say technology for good it's purely a software platform uh, there's another one that i invested in which is uh, in the low income housing space again it's a saas platform that uh, brings in efficiency into low income housing i didn't know much about low income housing but apparently the amount of paperwork that one has to go through to even get qualified for low-income housing is tremendous. There's piles and piles of paperwork, there's bureaucracy. So she's automated all of that. And again, you know, it's, it's a SaaS platform that's been built. By doing that, she now also has a whole database of people that she now sells other financial services to. So certain sectors of people need different kinds of financial services than other sectors right so she's been doing she's been doing all of this and there's this just i can go on and on and on but these are just some examples of uh, again what i call tech for good <laughs> yeah those are great examples thank you and i think what's exciting is those are things that i think we could all see in our cities or in our everyday lives making a big difference too so that's very exciting yeah Cool. Well, our last question is more so aimed at the students who are going to be watching this. So what do you hope that students take away from the impact investing competition that you've helped us build for this year? So I, I hope that, you know, more people understand what impact investing is, right? I also hope that more people consciously, you know, think about the products they use, about you know, sustainability. Should I be using plastic or non-compostable products that I keep throwing into, you know, the trash that go and sit in some dump? Or should I, is it okay to spend a little bit more and use something that helps the circular economy where we can use and reuse, you know, just as an example, uh, should we use different kinds of energy rather than the type that we use right now, you know? I'm hoping that by seeing what's out there, um, people think very consciously because this, the way agriculture is done today is changing a lot. And all of the bad pesticides and chemicals and things being used don't need to be used right? How do you uplift people? Um, because if you give people a chance and you help, you know, uh, all sectors of people move up, I think a lot would be done from a social standpoint. And um, I think if we do some for the environment, I'm, I'm hoping that students will have more exposure and access to what's out there where they can personally have an impact, whether they invest in these companies or use these products, uh, you know, just learn what's out there. Also get a better understanding that there is money to be made and impact to be created both at the same time. It's not one or the other. Uh, we don't have to stop one to make the other happen. So I'm hoping that you know, there's more interest in these things. I also hope that when people invest their own money, when you put your money in a mutual fund or a hedge fund or whatever it is that you do, or even in simple savings, 
that you think about how and what is this bank doing with my money or what is this financial institution doing with my money, right? Are they investing it appropriately? Are they not? Because you can invest in funds that are better than other funds, uh, et cetera. So I'm hoping that there's some consciousness there and that people think about what they're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Aarti, for giving us these uh, valuable insights about the impact investing space. Um, beginning from your own career journey and starting about like how technology per se interested you and then you moved on to entrepreneurship and then how you are actually making an impact as an impact investor. It's been like wonderful to hear you. Um, you also shared about how impact investing must be scalable, measurable, and how important it is that the innovators are fueled by a passion to change the world and bring a solution. What I really, I think what we really learn and one of the biggest takeaways from like from this conversation is that you can do good, but can still make money, <laughs> which like a lot of people think that are like opposites, right? Yeah. So, um, and you also shared with us the wonderful example of Med Hall, which is one of your recent investment activity. And it's been like really uh, wonderful and insightful to hear the story of how the founder actually is creating an on-ground change and impact. Uh, we deeply appreciate your time for this interview and I and Rachel want to really specially thank you for not just helping us with this interview, but also throughout this competition in advising us, in mentoring us and guiding us. So thank you so much. Thanks a lot.